It's all about having the key insights, following the leaders of the crypto industry and background stories on blockchain technology trends to keep you one step ahead. Monty Metzger, CEO of LCX.com, keeps you up to speed with what's moving global crypto markets and gives you the latest insights about LCX's platform and ecosystem. This is LCX Insights Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to LCX Insights Live. It's May 26, 21. What an exciting week so far. Markets are going up again. Looks very promising with a lot of things. So we are also very excited and thrilled. And um, nobody is um, lazy or taking any day off. Uh, in India is a big holiday today, but the whole team is uh, on in the office or at the home office at the moment and working heavily. So we had an intense day, which is coming to a close now. And I'm happy to welcome you at LCX Insights Live. In these live video shows, I'm engaging with the world's top blockchain projects, entrepreneurs, investors, and pioneers in crypto and blockchain in honest conversations meant to challenge traditional ways of thinking. My name is Monty Metzger, and I'm founder and CEO at LCX. LCX is a regulated fintech company that focuses on digital asset trading, compliant token offerings, and tokenization. LCX has recently received eight blockchain-related approvals by the Liechtenstein regulator, more than any other company in the country. And Liechtenstein, as you might not know yet, is a country in the middle of Europe, landlocked between Switzerland and uh, Austria. So it's about an hour drive from Zurich Airport. Um, and Liechtenstein is known to be a financial powerhouse. It has a triple A rating from Standard and Poor's as a country that's the highest the country can get. So very, very high reputation. We are proud to be in Liechtenstein, have the L in our name. Liechtenstein has also introduced the most forward-thinking legal framework for cryptocurrencies and blockchain companies, providing legal clarity for us, but also security and legal clarity for all our users. So we are a regulated and compliant company at lcx.com. Today's show goes deep into uh, Liechtenstein as a back end and also deep into kind of core technology at LCX. The show title today is The Liechtenstein Protocol, Standardized Framework for the Tokenization of Securities. So welcome with that topic to L6 Insights Live. So what did we prepare for today's show? So first of all, I'll start off with a presentation about the Liechtenstein Protocol because I assume most of you have not seen the full white paper, have not seen the full details about it. So I'll walk you through the key elements first, and then we'll open up to a couple of questions, and then we sum it up. So again, uh, to engage you with questions, uh, we have these fantastic LCX caps, and I want to give one away to the best question again. So we'll more or less randomly pick one of the good questions there and then give it out to one of our um, exciting and passionate LCX community members. So you can comment on LCX uh, channel at YouTube. Just go there in the comment section and then I'll pick a couple of these questions at the end of the session. But feel free to get started right away. So what can I tell you? Let's dive right into so. The Liechtenstein Protocol, Standardized Framework for the Tokenization of Securities. Let me walk you through this presentation. And it's structured with a couple of questions in mind. So with questions which had been popping up by the community anyway, with questions that had been um, within our team and with our partners and which I have answered many, many times before already. And I tell you why the Liechtenstein matters why it's important and why it's important for the future and long-term future also for the whole industry. Okay, so let me jump into the topic. What is the Liechtenstein Protocol? 
So the Liechtenstein protocol is a standardized framework for the tokenization of securities. So it's a blockchain, a blockchain solution for digital securities, or also known as security tokens or any tokenized assets. So anything which classifies as a security, that's where the Liechtenstein protocol really matters. Our technical white paper is a proposal for this new token standard as an industry-led initiative. So we've published the Liechtenstein Protocol white paper, which you see here on the slide as well. It's public on our website, lcx.com, where you see all the details, but I'll tell you the most important thing. The Liechtenstein Protocol standard is programmed to automatically enforce specific conditions that relate to legal and also regulatory requirements applicable to securities and enables automated compliance of tokenized assets with predefined requirements built in the code. So in more simple words, the token standard is needed if you want to go and have a compliant token offering with a sec security. So whether it's a security token or classified as a digital private security, uh, if you do a Reg D offering in, in the US, um, you need a token standard which is enforceable not only in theory or on paper, but actually on blockchain, on chain. So the Liechtenstein protocol embeds these compliance elements at token level and allows for decentralized trading and private securities of private securities across any blockchain that supports the specific blockchain network. So let me repeat here. So the Liechtenstein protocol combines the technology and um, regulatory compliant elements on the token level that allows for decentralized and of course centralized trading of private securities and digital securities on any platform. What does that mean? So what are the benefits of the Liechtenstein protocol? First of all, it's interoperability. So it's a decentralized trading. It enables decentralized trading of private securities across any blockchain. So the Liechtenstein protocol embeds compliance at token level and allows for decentralized trading of private securities or any digital securities across any platform that supports the specific blockchain network. Number one. Number two on-chain identity. So there's a single KYC or investor management process, uh, which is an identity management on blockchain, combining compliance, regulatory, and technology requirements to enable security token offerings. Benefit number three, real-time cap table, enabling a real-time token holder registry, listing all holders of the digital security. Benefit number four, tokenization, creating a digital representative of financial instruments on the blockchain. And number five benefit, it's the on-chain asset management. Management of the tokenized digital asset on the blockchain, issuance, time blocking, burning, and transaction monitoring, and, and much more. So these are the benefits of the Liechtenstein protocol. What are the elements of the Liechtenstein protocol? So the Liechtenstein protocol includes three core services on blockchain. Number one, the LP token, that stands for the Liechtenstein token. And it's an authorized smart contract that represents ownership of securities. Number two, compliance service. So LCX sophisticated crypto compliance suite, fully um, appropriate um, proprietary, um, empowers the whitelisting and the token holder registry. So we have built up the crypto compliance suite from scratch over a period of over one and a half years, tested it. We did even had a check by the Financial Market Authority lately going in all the details. And now we also are ready to implement and launch the travel rule on June 1st, um, which is a requirement for all Liechtenstein companies. So, and number three, the third element of the Liechtenstein protocol, the identity registry. The identity registry is a single smart contract that we call the hub of identities. So LCX is a regulated identity service provider in accordance with the Liechtenstein blockchain laws. Users will have to pass verification at LCX. 
So these are the key elements of the Liechtenstein protocol. Let me repeat. So the key elements of the Liechtenstein protocol are the LP token, which stands for Liechtenstein protocol, with an embedded smart contract for ownership of securities. Number two, the compliance services, which includes whitelisting, token holder registry. And number three, the identity registry, which is a single smart contract, which we call the hub of identities. And this is something which we do as a regulated identity service provider, which you also find in the FMA registry there as one of our key roles and registrations in accordance to the blockchain laws. So how does the Liechtenstein protocol work? <laughs> the Liechtenstein protocol embeds compliance at the token level and allows for decentralized trading of private and digital securities across any platform that supports the specific blockchain network. So here you see an infographic and on the left side you see the KYC registry, on the right side you see the identity registry and in the bottom middle it's the LP token smart contract. So um, the LP security token transfer takes place after a complete compliance check and identity check on the sender as well as the, of the receiver. In a, in a best case scenario, like if everything is set up, you won't recognize that this is happening. There is an instance check like in milliseconds on the service and on the blockchain and then that's it. So within the process of doing any transaction, this is checked automatically. So if a person A here on the left side uh, wants to send or trade a token to person B, um, person A will use the LP token smart contract to transfer this to token B. Uh, to person B. If in any of the checks of um, one of the system fails, then it will show an error message to person A. So the transaction will not happen. So what do we do? So first of all, there's a compliance check running um, which goes to the KYC registry. And then there's an on-chain identity registry where we check that the user, person B, is actually uh, fully identified then and the transaction is happening and the cap table is then updated. So this is a complete successful transfer. Our solution enforces regulatory compliance at the token level, thereby meeting core security requirements regardless of whether the trade occurs on centralized or decentralized exchanges. And that's very, very important. So in, in a nutshell, probably... Let me rephrase this a little bit and give you some more background. How does the Liechtenstein protocol work? As we enforce this regulatory requirements of digital security trading, we've established or developed the Liechtenstein protocol as a new standard where we enable uh, the token, have the token in the center of the transaction and then have built a couple of services around. So first of all, it's an on-chain on -chain identity registry um, there's a, a compliance service with our, the LCX crypto compliance suite, could be even expanded at some point to other service providers to really have it fully decentralized. But at first step to be also uh, fully Liechtenstein compliant, well, you know, our compliance requirements are a little bit more strict than most of the platforms I've seen. And we're ready to also roll this out internationally, whether it's North America or, or Singapore markets, uh, where there are also quite strict rules. And so that's a key benefit from us. So while we are in Liechtenstein, we really think global from day one. What functions does the Liechtenstein Protocol LP token support? There are three core functions. The first one is time locking. So large shareholders, such as company executives and investors representing considerable ownership, are restricting from selling the tokens, just like in an initial public offering. And that's especially uh, important if you trade private securities with a Reg D offering, then there's typically in the, in the US a 12-month lockup anyway. And this is something which we can force, enforce on token level right away. Then the burnable and the burn function. So companies can choose to buy back sec security tokens from the market for numerous reasons, such as to meet stock option obligations, improve financial ratios, take advantage of an undervalued 
share price, increase ownership and reduce dilution. So there might be some strategic aspects, but also some uh, kind of token economics aspect where the bone burn function will be very important. And number three, pausable. So pausable, also known as stock hold, is a temporary hold in the trading of a security. Usually the hold is imposed for regulatory reasons, the ante anticipation of signif significant news, or to correct a situation in which they are excess uh, buy or sell orders for specific security. So regulators, you have to understand, regulators coming from the old traditional world. And I believe that we can't solve the current challenges of tokenization of digital securities with the old solution. Nevertheless, there are some good and reasonable ideas from the traditional world which can be applied. So this is, there are some of, of the examples and um, the functions on the LP token level. How does the whitelisting work? So, um, that the Liechtenstein Protocol works, um, a key element of the Liechtenstein Protocol is the whitelisting. There are three key elements to it. So the first one is the whitelisting agent. So there's a wallet whitelisting, which is a process where a user can provide their blockchain address on the LCX platform. And our whitelisting agent from the compliance team can whitelist uh, your address on the blockchain. Typically, that's done completely uh, automatic. And um, the second element of it, of the whitelisting, is the whitelisting transaction. So whitelisting transaction on the blockchain includes gas fees. So one whitelisting will be for free for everyone at LCX. If a user wants to hold security tokens on more addresses or transfer it to another wallet of themselves, they have to pay an additional fee, uh, which is paid in LCX token. And then we, we cover the gas fees. And the third element, identity contract. So in this process, your address will also be added to the identity contract in a whitelisted address. In the blockchain, um, you can know whether any wallet is listed or not. So we are checking the, the blockchains uh, within the transaction as explained before, and then we can know if there's a wallet, whitelisted wallet, who belongs to that wallet. And these are key requirements if we're trading digital securities. How does the token holder registry work? There are three key elements to it. The real-time cap table, the cap table management, and the identity contract. Let me explain. So the real-time cap table shows the current ownership or token holder addresses for security tokens. The cap table management um, can be viewed, exported, or printed for the current moment or for any moment in the past instantly with a um, push of a button. Identity contract. We are maintaining the real-time cap table on the blockchain with the help of the identity contract and whitelisted addresses. The real-time cap table is updated due to our unique identification numbers embedded in the smart contract of the LP tokens. So for some of you who are very familiar with the crypto and blockchain industry, these sound very familiar, like cap table management. You know, you just go in the holder registry and ESA scan, you see all the holders, the top holders, you can rank them and so on. But coming from the old financial world, most of these processes are built in silos. So one company or one entity even if it's connected to, to the trading, can't immediately see or does not have access to the other silo database. On top of that, um, it's not even real, uh, close to real time. So it's sometimes really delayed, it's complex, and there are certain companies, it's a big own market for cap table management. If you Google it, cap table management for stocks and private securities, there are specific companies only doing that. So I think with that new efficiency and innovation is really uh, pushing the limits, it will um, make the markets much more efficient and much more global. And also um, a lot of new applications can be built on top of that. But for sure, a lot of people who are doing this at the moment probably won't do this uh, because it won't be needed in the future anymore uh, and replaced with these innovative technologies. Which blockchain is the Liechtenstein Protocol based on? So the Liechtenstein Protocol is DLT 
uh, agnostic. So we build it in a way that it's fully interoperability, interoperable um, and it's fully blockchain agnostic. So what we've built on the Liechtenstein protocol, if you open the white paper, it's a technical white paper, you immediately see that it's blockchain agnostic. We first launched um, with the Ethereum blockchain. So for the Ethereum blockchain, the Liechtenstein protocol will be called the ELP, which stands for Ethereum Liechtenstein protocol, of course. But the next iteration is already being prepared um, and for all of the community here, there might be some, some announcements being prepared around Polkadot. I think one of the outstanding new uh, future leaders of in the space. So we are building the Liechtenstein protocol also on the Polkadot systems, on the parachain and networks. And this will be called the PLP, the Polkadot Limited uh, Liechtenstein uh, protocol. And then Cardano, of course, um, very important for us as well. I think Cardano is exciting because, you know, the main net and the, the main rollout will uh, start very soon. Um, so in the next couple of months, we will see the first apl applications being rolled out. And um, so at the, at the moment, it's a very good turning, time, turning point for Cardano as well. We'll see what will come to light here. So for us, the Liechtenstein protocol will be also built then on Cardano, rolled out, um, will be named the CLP, the Cardano Liechtenstein protocol. And last but not least, one of our key partners also, ICANN Foundation. Um, so for ICANN blockchain, the token will be named ILP for ICANN Liechtenstein protocol. So these are variations, but as said, the Liechtenstein protocol is fully blockchain agnostic. It works across any blockchain, we could be applied to many more blockchains. So we don't want to compete with any of the public blockchains, but rather uh, enable it um, for any of these blockchains or even for B2B uh, blockchain related topics. So um, if there is a, a, a quarter blockchain being um, used for the security token offering, that's something which we could support as well. Or uh, look at Hedera Hashgraph. Um, that's something which we also discussing at the moment for the Liechtenstein protocol and the rollout there. But in general, if you look at the white paper and technology white paper, it is written in a way that it could be applied to any blockchain. The functionalities are the same. The technology setup then the backend will be different. And um, uh, regarding on, on the blockchains, there might be some special features which are then only possible on the specific blockchains. So how does LCX introduce the Liechtenstein protocol to the global crypto market? There are three key elements to it. But in a nutshell, LCX is enabling compliant token offerings for security tokens, but also for any other crypto assets. So utility tokens or governance tokens. And it's important to mention that because where is the market right now? If you look at the top assets, these are all non-securities. That's where the money is made at the moment. So that's why we are ready to welcome any utility tokens or governance token sale or other non-security token sales enabled by our token sale platform. For security tokens, the Liechtenstein protocol really comes into play because then we can enable the specific features for digital securities on top of that. So there are three key elements to it. So at the middle, at the center is the token launchpad or STO launchpad and our token sale platform. There's a little screenshot and teaser here for you. We tested it last year with the first MVP on a movie project. And so the similar system, but improved, will be used for additional uh, security token offerings, but also for other uh, utility token offerings. Then the two key elements in the, in the back end, which are particularly important for the companies running these token sales. So there's a token lifecycle management. So first of all, you can track the sale. You can see how much uh, tokens you sold, which um, jurisdictions, which users, um, what are kind of the, the, the selling times, and you can um, actually break it down in different levels. So for any utility token sale or token sale on our platform, it's a, you can structure it with a private sale first. Um, also, we can uh, allocate some specific allocations for the LCX community or LCX premium users. 
um, there. Uh, so that's something which we always find very interesting to offer to our community, which we are negotiating in these deals. On top of that, um, you can go into the life cycle of any token. So besides the sale, it's about transaction monitoring. It's about uh, kind of the full life cycle and usage of the tokens until uh, probably also the end of a, of a usage life cycle. So if you think about securities, if it's a tokenized bond, there might be a certain time frame where these bonds are active and then they are deactivated and turned into a digital collectible, for example. So these functions need to be managed. On the other hand, there is the investor management, and that's a key part, which is also ongoing. So what a lot of token sales and also security tokens offerings think at the moment is that they just like do it in a compliant way once. But actually, what is very important, if you look at the traditional stock markets also, you have to do this on an ongoing uh, way like all the time if there are transactions happening if there are new investors coming in if there's somebody selling from a to b um, there's a new investor joining or if there's somebody dying and then giving to the to the kids these are things where the investor management platform will be a key key part and, and this should be done in a simple way in a simple manner for the users but for the in investor management there needs to be some specific um, things. For example, if your digital security is restricted in certain countries, you, have, you can block them. If there are certain elements where uh, you don't want to have certain splits of tokens to too many investors or the other way around, no whales, these are things which you can all then uh, manage in that. And most importantly, probably like repeating the question here, how does LCX introduce the Liechtenstein protocol to the global crypto markets? So LCX is enabling these compliant token offerings for security tokens, but also for any other crypto assets like utility tokens or governance tokens. And this is not a vision. We have built this already. It's ready to be rolled out. There's the token launch pad and the token sales platform. There's the token lifecycle management and there's the investor management, which is for the sale, but also for the whole lifetime of the token, which is relevant. So that's it about, about, about it. So what are the key, the, let me repeat, what are the three key takeaways if you think about the Liechtenstein protocol? Number one, the Liechtenstein protocol is the first step to create a decentralized compliant protocol for security tokens. Number two, it offers solutions to current challenges blocking the growth of digital securities. And number three, this new security token standard solves how digital securities can be issued, transferred, and traded in a compliant manner across centralized and also decentralized platforms. Very, very exciting to be part of that. And we are driving this as a, as a long-term effort to really unblock the growth of digital securities. As a side effect, what we are doing right now is a lot of the elements for the Liechtenstein protocol, for the STO launchpad, are super important for any other token sale right now in the markets. Because where is the market at the moment? Where is the money? If you look at the current crypto markets, it's all from meme tokens to public blockchain to utility tokens. Most of these are non-securities. It's easier um, to launch on a compliant basis, but nevertheless, you know, regulators are looking closely at what the projects do. So with LCX, also these projects can be launched in a fully compliant manner and you don't have to worry about the future there. One aspect to it, which I want to just throw in here. If you're looking, let me go uh, back to this. If you're looking to do a token sale, a compliant token sale, there's one specific role which we have achieved to get at the, uh, in accordance to the Liechtenstein blockchain regulation, which is called the token issuer. So we can issue tokens on behalf of projects, whether they're in Singapore, Gibraltar, USA, or somewhere else in Europe, we can issue it. So LCX is becoming the issuer, the legal issuer of these tokens. And we can do this in compliant way in, in, in like under the roof and also the legal clarity of the Liechtenstein laws at a, at a fraction of the cost. So 
the companies do not need to open a Liechtenstein company. Um, they can just, or the projects, they can basically talk to us and do this um, together with us. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. Um, in the last AMA sessions, you already um, knew a little bit about it. There are some projects being planned at the moment. Very, very exciting. And uh, yeah, so this will drive usage of LCX platform, of LCX exchange, uh, and our trading terminals. Where can I learn more about the Liechtenstein protocol? So, number one, download the white paper at lcx.com slash Liechtenstein minus protocol. Number two, get your free LCX account. So, register at lcx.com and get your free LCX account. You can use LCX Exchange, our new regulated compliant exchange, which had been launched in January, which is growing rapidly in terms of new assets being listed, and it's slowly growing in liquidity as well. We're pushing the limits here to get you a safe, a secure, and compliant platform for trading cryptocurrencies uh, globally. And number three, join the community. The LCX community and the LCX family is growing rapidly. We have more than 50,000 Twitter followers. I think over 30,000 something in the Telegram community. So at Twitter, you find us at LCX and at Telegram, it's t.me slash join LCX. And then also there's a LCX news channel, which is t.me slash LCX news. So that's all about the Liechtenstein protocol, the standardized framework for tokenization of digital securities. But now it's time to turn to your questions. I think there are some people out there who want to win uh, LCX cap. So let me uh, check your questions and see where we stand. Um, so give me a second here. Uh, okay, so there are some positive uh, news here. Monty for president. Um, glad to be here. It looks great. And... A lot of, lot of good questions coming in. Okay, which one should I take first? Okay, let me first take this question in regards to the Liechtenstein protocol. And then um, I'll take also some, probably some other questions because I see here questions around L6 exchange, liquidity, new assets being launched, uh, mobile application, and, and these things. Um, very, very important as well. As a side note, if you have not noticed, all our applications are fully mobile responsive. So even um, the SEO Launchpad, even the L6 Exchange uh, works very well on the mobile and on any smartphone as well. Okay, let's take a question here from Chris Keynes first. Hi, Chris. What will be the ambition of LCX as an actor of tokenization in the future? What percentage of this market LCM aims to capture in the future? Okay, so first of all, how big is the market at the moment? And compared to the cryptocurrency markets out there at the moment, I think it's still small. There are a lot of ambitious and very innovative projects being launched at the moment, but the numbers are um, not so exciting. So these projects are low. If you look at T0 at the security token exchange, also trading volume is low. The potential, but as a side effect, is in the trillions. So the potential for digital securities traded on blockchain networks is 100 times bigger than the current cryptocurrency markets. And that's where it gets super excited. What percentage of this market aims, LCX aims to capture? So we aim to get a significant share. We aim to be a key market uh, leader in this space. And to actually achieve that, we have to build the market together with some other players. The market is so huge, of course, there will be a lot of other players. If you look at banks, like how many banks are there? They're all very good, surviving, most of them very profitable businesses. How many exchanges are there? NASDAQ, London Stock Exchange, and Thailand Stock Exchange, and so on. Profitable businesses, very interesting uh, business models as well. So we see that the exchange itself is a highly profitable business. That's why also we decided to create LCX, the Liechtenstein Crypto Assets Exchange, our goal is to be a new category leader 
in that space. But we have to take it step by step because we don't know how quickly the markets are developing and we have a long-term plan for the next five to 10 years to really grow this. As you remember, for every entrepreneur, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. So we are in year three now. So um, to really build up this market, um, we are building it step by step, but uh, already, yeah, quite successful with what we do right now. Let's take a related question here from M. Hello, Mr. Metzger. Do you think that the L6 exchange will be number one in the world and leave all other exchanges behind because of the requirements to have compliance and RAC in the future? Okay, of course we aim to be the number one in a specific category. Um, of course, it would be great to be uh, number one in the world, but you have to see number one in the world in which area. Yeah. So if you look at which is the number one stock exchange at the moment, which is the number one Bitcoin exchange, which is the number one payment network, which is the one number one settlement bank for um, international FX payments. Um, so there are different categories, and obviously we will uh, we will be leading in one or several of these of these categories in the future. Very very exciting. Will we leave other exchanges behind? So I think, you know, as the market matures, users will choose other exchanges, will go from one exchange to another. Let me compare this to the development of uh, social media platforms. You know, as some of you might remember, at the beginning of social media platforms, there was MySpace, uh, but also a key competitor was Friendster. So there was MySpace, Friendster, having the first 100 million users, then 400 million users, I think was, was a big milestone. And nobody thought that there could be another social media platform achieving such a growth, taking over the market. Um, and then there was this little student platform used at some university campuses called the Facebook. And um, during that time, you know, it was hard to imagine um, that this could take over. But some of the functionalities at the Facebook during the time were so attractive to really turn over the market, young people immediately switched over. And we've seen it happen, happen again and again and again. So, you know, digital markets are evolving very quickly. We see it in crypto at a light speed um, development also. So, you know, liquidity can move quickly. Users can move quickly. So we are preparing for an... Um, uh, let's say, um, ah, now I'm missing the word. So we are looking at LCX for an, a tremendous growth on the platform. We are preparing for this growth. And um, that's why uh, we believe that, of course, we will be a category leader in the cryptocurrency space for sure. Let's take another question. Okay. M is also asking, could you share with us how many people work for LCX on a daily basis? So LCX had been growing tremendously on a daily basis. How many people are working on that? Um, so I can categorize in kind of different freelancers, different people involved. I think in terms of People working on a daily basis is probably 50 already, but in terms of full-time employees, we are at 27 uh, at the moment, so 27 full-time employees, uh, almost tripled now since uh, uh, earlier this year, so we are growing rapidly, we are hiring, we are looking for good blockchain developers, we are looking for um, partnership ecosystem, uh, people who can also work with STO platforms and other um, tokenization project together because this is time intense um, needs some expertise on it and we also you know heavily investing in a compliance space so okay we see analysts compliant managers or even general counsels so lawyers are needed so there are some open positions in that regard so for example we are looking for a young passionate uh, lawyer working uh, 24 7 um, on weekends during nights and preparing a lot of legal documents for it so um, a lot of things are on top of these kind of core team also um, with some partners so we have uh, 
legal advisors. We have uh, other kind of external uh, service providers who also help us scale. So from PR to legal to um, kind of other gross uh, elements there, I would say, um, yeah, almost 50 people really touching LCX, uh, working on it on a daily basis. Let's take another question. Uh, CW Crypto is asking, how have you achieved that level of interoperability? So first of all, we built the Liechtenstein protocol from scratch. So um, we built it in mind to be fully DLT interoperable, to be blockchain agnostic, and that it works, the system works across the blockchains. On uh, In addition to that, we've built everything around the Liechtenstein blockchain laws, which are, I think, leading the way on so many levels at the moment because it's not regulating one piece of the puzzle but the whole blockchain uh, industry from A to Z so that the whole value chain, value creation of crypto and blockchain um, are regulated and, and looked at. But in a lightweight, kind of simple framework still, um, and that will be adapted to a lot of uh, additional regions. So the Mika... Um, proposal from ESMA, from the European regulator, um, is also taking some of the elements um, from Liechtenstein into consideration. We see some sim sim similarities. We also prepared this on a legal basis to be ready for North American markets, for Asian Singapore markets, for example. So um, there's a legal interoperability, there's a technical interoperability, and then there's a, I think, blockchain agnostic uh, approach to it, which really makes the Liechtenstein protocol very, very unique. That's a good question here also from Adi. Do you envision the Liechtenstein protocol growing majorly outside Liechtenstein itself? Do you think other countries will pick this up rather than creating their own protocol? Very important part. We've just named it the Liechtenstein protocol. It's not an official name. It's not a, a trademark or something like that. That's our kind of protocol work and process uh, name for it, which is not related to the country of Liechtenstein. It's just where we are from. And nevertheless, we are thinking very international. While we are headquartered in Liechtenstein, we think global from day one and we see the biggest growth potential for the Liechtenstein protocol on a global and international level. One aspect if you have not noticed LCX is all doing all communication in English the whole platform everything is in English because we think global and international we are targeting North American markets heavily as well also with the next steps in terms of growth of licenses and so on. Um, so that's something which we are uh, planning. And so the Liechtenstein protocol will grow outside of Liechtenstein most, uh, mostly. And one kind of side anecdote to it. And a question probably here. Um, can you guess how many people are living in Liechtenstein? What's the population? Who knows this? Who knows the answer? How many people are living in Liechtenstein? You can type your answer here in the comments. Okay, I see some, some comments coming in. So Liechtenstein is the sixth smallest country in the world. It has a population of roughly 35, 38,000 people. So that's probably a small suburb in Singapore or New York City, probably like Chelsea or even, even less. Yeah, so... It's a small, so small country, but it's a financial powerhouse. It has the highest GDP in the world, so $250,000 per capita. Um, sometimes it's in the um, rankings, it's mixed up with uh, Switzerland. But if you look uh, at Liechtenstein in particular, it has the highest GDP. That's not because the people earn so much over there but more that there are so many financial institutions, so many um, large banks, family offices, foundations, um, like global institutions. You know, the IKEA Foundation is based, headquartered in Liechtenstein. The Samba brothers, the famous German entrepreneurs, have their family foundation in Liechtenstein, uh, headquartered over there as well. So... 
there are some, if you think global, if you act global as an investor, Liechtenstein is really a good place to be. Uh, and also to secure the kind of wealth of a family uh, that's where Liechtenstein had been known for in, in the past. Okay, LCX to the moon. Okay. Emma is asking, do you have enough funds to grow LCX globally? Would be great to see LCX banners all over the world. Uh, P.S. Thank you for answering my questions. Really uh, appreciate that. Okay, so do we have enough funds to grow LTX globally? I think we have enough funds. We are a well-funded company uh, at the moment. We see the growth happening on the platform. But I also have the like long history of building traction and companies myself. So I started the first company back in 1995 in 1998, while I had been in school in, in Germany, um, doing the first HTML programming and website development over there. Um, and since then, I had been an entrepreneur. The five years before I started LCX, I had been on the investor side. So I started a venture capital fund. I invested in technology startups. I saw startups rise, grow, exit, but also a lot of companies failing. Um, and, just, you know, as a startup, it's, uh, there are so many things why you can fail but uh, for us it's important like if you do any mistakes to learn from it to iterate to improve and to move forward and for that we have a long-term thinking if we throw out most of our budget in banners right now there might be an instant hype or buzz created but no long-term value so you have to consider that if there are um, businesses who does that who are not have constant revenues yet uh, this will be very questionable. Once the business is profitable, then you can share, uh, you can put a, a percentage of it in constant advertising and, and growing it and growing it. Most of the businesses I see out there are really um, uh, taking only VC money or investor money um, and then throwing it out of the window uh, to create a bubble, then go public or being quiet or I don't know what, what their the plan is. So, so that's something where we take a much more conservative um, approach to it. Nevertheless, we want to see the platform grow. So our goal is with LCX to reach a million or several million of users within this year. We want to grow in terms of uh, liquidity on LCX exchange. We want to be a new category in terms of tokenization. And for all that, we are pushing. And when is the right time, we also will put in uh, more banners, more advertising, and push that out. A key element for us for growth is our LCX community. So I can ask you, after this session here, you have to go out, share some of these clips we share on, on Twitter, share it, retweet it, send it to your friends, invite them to join the LCX platform, start trading your favorite tokens. There are great arbitrage opportunities at the moment, even for Bitcoin, Ethereum, at the LCX exchange. So um, you can get started with that. And then, um, yeah, we are taking you on a journey with additional things. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay, there's a, there's a fun question here from Nikki Mastro. Hi, Monty. What do you like to do for fun when you're not working on LCX? So I'm laughing because we are just working a lot. Um, we are all working a lot. I think we have a 12, 14, 16 hour days, uh, very common here. We're pushing limits, especially since we got the licenses. So I think uh, what I'm doing for fun, um, I think most of the time I'm spending with uh, not in front of my uh, team, with the team and, and partners and everything, uh, spending time with my family. Then we have a wonderful life uh, uh, in, in nature outside here in, in Switzerland, in Liechtenstein. The mountains are there, lakes are there. It's, it's beautiful um, to spend some, some time there, also to rethink or to do calls uh now in in the nature but i have to say uh it's all heads down at the moment we are focusing on getting things done and to get things done you also have to hard work uh, work hard yeah so uh, hustling every day 
um, pushing without that it's it's not happening you know um it's now late in the evening here um the rest of the the office building is is already uh closed down and um yeah we are still here next question <laughs> okay What question should I take? Um, here, let's take a, a question from Pret Petrens Arnaud. Um, do you have an update regarding to the venture program? Let me repeat, what is the LCX venture program? We are looking for outstanding early stage companies who want to do a token sale, whether it's a security token, a utility token, or governance tokens. And what we are doing is we're providing services valued of up to $250,000 and invest that into the company. So there are no upfront costs. We are covering a major cost for legal aspects, for setting up um, all the, the legal uh, structure. We're working with the companies to do their token sale in a fully compliant manner. We provide the technology, we provide the cap table management, the identity management, the full KYC platform, you know, sale fees, a password upload. Like we cover these costs for the companies and then we launch this project together with them as a, not only as a service provider, but really as a partner, as an investor. And that's what the LCX Venture Program is about. We got plenty of applications and a lot of these applications are carefully now evaluated. Um, some of them had been also declined right away, didn't match our criteria, but we are taking it very uh, carefully. You know, the first project which we are launching, they, we will be measured. And um, I can tell you that you probably saw some of our partners there where we were planning a, a token sale at the moment. Um, so community has or probably some has seen some sites uh, in that direction already. Our goal is to um, work with some established, highly reputed uh, people as well for the first um, one or two projects, and then also pick out some very passionate, outstanding startups um, to do that as well. And uh, yeah, for startups, I think a token sale is an incredible. Uh, way to uh, fund the company to um, go out to look for clients and users before they even have um, a proper product so it really turns the vc model upside down okay next question Okavano, are there any other fiat gateways planned in the near future so lcx exchange has launched a gateway together with Monarium where you can deposit euro via a SEPA payment, which means SEPA goes across all Europe and they're all European economic area. Um, we are supporting SEPA and SEPA Instant. So if you use SEPA Instant, it's really incredible because from the moment euro leaves your account until it's hit your L6 account, it's probably one or two minutes, sometimes faster than a, um, than a Bitcoin transaction or Bitcoin anyway. Um, <laughs> takes too long so it's really an incredible good experience also with for withdrawal it, it works you can do up to fifteen thousand euros per transaction at the moment um and uh, so the the launch uh, had been successful so far we're seeing um, daily transactions going in and out people trend trading on the platform with this uh, tokenized digital euro will there be other additional fiat gateways yes 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 and yes so first of all uh, other currencies, other ways, other bank partners, uh, other payment system. Uh, we're, um, yeah, it's coming. Next question, boss battle. Why tokenize diamonds? Will it work like ice cap? Okay, some insiders here. So um, there are some competitors in the market who are doing uh, tokenized diamonds. Ice cap is one of them. Uh, for all of you who don't know, uh, LCX has announced or teased at the last session Tiamonds.com, tokenized diamonds. You will find it at Tiamonds.com, at, at Tiamonds, at Twitter as well. There's a little teaser, there's some uh, information, and there's a countdown where we release all um, details around the project and then 
um, also on how you can get involved. Tokenized diamonds are interesting for us in, in several ways. First of all, with the roles and uh, registrations, we have gotten approval by the Liechtenstein regulator. Uh, we want to also roll out a couple of showcases, examples, and um, tokenization of other assets um, can be more complex. And diamonds is a very, very interesting market because, first of all, it's an illiquid, illiquid market. So uh, trading of diamonds is yeah, uh, very volatile or or that there's no clear pricing of it. There are no really global markets, but the asset itself is, is very... Um, uh, highly known. Um, there are many experts. You can get good, good uh, certificates around it. So we can really prove as a physical validator in this role um, under the, in, in accordance to Liechtenstein blockchain laws that we are a physical validator. We can uh, lock up and sure these uh, diamonds. So it's a very good use case for us to show what we can do with tokenization, and then eventually. Uh, these things could be then, and the learnings could be applied to tokenized art uh, pieces, tokenized real estate, tokenized other assets uh, which are in the physical world. But now tokenized diamonds is just a very, very exciting uh, market. And actually, I believe that diamonds.com, especially with the additional aspects, will outperform um, yeah, a lot of other kind of projects which are out there. Um, I think with IceCap, you can see that um, they have uh, 30, 40 diamonds out there. Um, there's some trading activity. It's it's not really a buzz. So we looked at uh, what they did, they did uh, in a good way, what are positive things, what are negative things. But we wanted to engage the community even further and look at this meme of tokenized, uh, of diamond hands. So we wanted to look at the meme of diamond hands and uh, to bring an extra feature to diamonds.com. So everything will be um, then announced later, but I think it will be uh, very exciting and we are looking to really get a, a global momentum on this uh, project when the launch is there. Perfect. So thanks for the applause here. Uh, keep, it, uh, keep it going. Um, next question. Let's take another question. Ike is asking, when will we see Icon listing? Uh, are there any updates in this partnership? So uh, we announced the Icon Foundation partnership. And what I can tell you, there will be a big, big update with a special session with Min Kim, the founder in LCX Insights Live very soon. Uh, the date is fixed. I don't have in mind within the next two weeks or so. We'll do the session uh, two or three weeks. Don't claim me um, there. So it, it, I know it's fixed. Minik has confirmed there will be a session with Icon Foundation. What had been done with the partnership so far? So since we uh, announced it, we had been working on security token standards. Um, they had given us feedback on their systems, on their thoughts, and especially also on the Korean markets, what had been happening there in regulation. How, how can we use this knowledge to bring in the Liechtenstein protocol? So again, if you look at the Liechtenstein protocol and where do we stand here, a lot of the knowledge had been going into um, this as well. So let me go back to um, this slide here, which blockchain is the Liechtenstein protocol based on. So ICANN is a key part of that as well. Then just flipping to kind of another key slide. I think the benefits of Liechtenstein protocol is a good one. Okay, let's take uh, two more questions and then we'll wrap up this session here. Nikki Maestro, again, a question from you. Do you think the push from governments against unregulated crypto exchanges will have a positive effect on liquidity on the L6 exchange? So, first of all, the push from governments against unregulated exchanges is happening. It's a reality. It's going on all the time. A lot of things are not public um, and which you don't see. So, everything which goes to press is actually um, already kind of coming so many stages that it, it can't be suppressed anymore. But there are many, many more things happening in that regard. 
Um, so uh, we, we see that happening all the time. So there's kind of a crypto crackdown on these unregulated exchanges. There's a risk involved if you're a user also. And I do th believe that there will be a big shift in liquidity happening at some point. There will be a trigger point where um, users will shift liquidity to these uh, regulated exchanges like L6 Exchange, like Coinbase, like uh, Kraken, um, probably, who are really pushing in that direction. And then uh, probably there will be also new players also uh, going in that direction. But we see us really as a new category leader for a regulated compliant cryptocurrency exchange. And this will drive liquidity for sure. Then a question here from Kerry first. Will Timons use the L6 token to pay some or sort of fees or some other utility for L6 token? So, first of all, the L6 token is core part of the L6 family of our L6 community. So, we want to give benefits to our token holders as well. So, um, what we are um, have planned is actually to give um, a certain uh, benefit to all LCX uh, token holders and to all LCX users. And I think the first priority is for, for timings are really for our L6 users, not only uh, the ones who are buying the token, but who are actually registered users at the platform. So um, you can tell your friends and um, to register there, there will be um, additional benefits if you have a verified account in relation to the timings project. Will the LCX token be used to pay some fees? Um, I think I won't comment on this right now. We are in the fine tuning of the token economics in general uh, with most or like with all projects uh, which we have, the L6 token can be used to pay fees. To summarize, what are the key features of the LCX token? What can you pay with it? How can you use it? First of all, you can use it at LCX exchange to get 50% off all trading fees. You just go in settings, then choose pay with LCX token, and then you save 50%. Second uh, key feature is at LCX DeFi terminal, you need to stack and provide 10,000 LCX token in your wallet. Once you have that um, provided in your decentralized like MetaMask wallet, then you uh, all the features are unlocked and you can have limit orders on Uniswap. Um, so there we don't charge anything, so the service is free, but um, we are needing um, or the user needs to put in 10,000 LCX token to unlock all the features. And um, the third key element is LCX terminal, where you can pay a monthly subscription fee, like a software as a service um, subscription fee on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis in LCX token. So we uh, had credit card in the past, also payments, but we canceled that. Like everything now is paid with LCX token. So these are the key uh, elements where you can use L6 token at the moment. So Ika also asking, will the L6 token have applications on timings? It will have um, applications or benefits for all our LCX users for sure. Then here from Ise Engelbert, um, what are your plans regarding CBDCs? So central bank digital currencies is a key research topic. We are engaging with policymakers. We are engaging with um, governments and, and leaders and thinkers in that space since a long time. So since I think 2017, I'm engaging in different forums um, and workshops and also kind of closed door workshops. We even hosted a workshop with the World Economic Forum uh, during the Singapore fin FinTech Festival um, back 2019. So there we hosted and, and invited uh, up to 15 uh, central banks. So there was the Central Bank of uh, South Africa, Central Bank of Thailand, um, the, the Fed from the US and other central banks had been there. We had been speaking about uh, CBDCs, future of central bank currencies, stable coins, about um, algorithmic stable coins, um, asset-backed stable coins, and all different kind of payment tokens looking into that. So what are our plans in that? Of course, we are not a central bank, so we can't issue central bank digital currencies, but 
our plan is if um, more and more central banks are issuing uh, central bank digital currencies, the, or if the first ones are coming out, a, uh, international settlement will be a big market. So that's something where we position uh, ourselves as uh, as a kind of B two B, or even B two C to um, uh, or B two B two C platform where. Um, we can enable international settlement of stablecoins, CBDCs, um, on behalf of banks and other financial institutions. That's a big, big market we had been thinking about. But obviously now we are waiting to get the first hands on the central bank digital currencies as a, as a kind of a step in between. There will be more uh, private issued stablecoins coming out. Um, and digital currencies, including the one from DM. Um, then there might be other ones. We are also working closely with the Cello Foundation. As you have seen, they are doing the Cello Choke, the Cello Dollar. There is a Cello Euro, uh, also very um, exciting project. And here, the, my tip is for you, if you have not experienced Cello, buy some Cello at LCX Exchange and withdraw it um, to a Cello wallet incredible experience to see. So that's what everybody's dreaming of at Ethereum and Bitcoin, like super fast, immediate transaction, fully decentralized. So it's really incredible what Celo has built up. Okay, so um, that's kind of an anecdote here. Okay, so uh, Diamond Hands, I think with that, we are closing up the session one hour, seven minutes already. It was fun. It was engaging. Thank you all for joining this and think about the key benefits of the Liechtenstein Protocol. I think there's really uh, one of our diamonds which we have built and which uh, the industry as a whole has not really um, honored so far. The white paper which you can um, access at lcx.com is really well thought through. It's made um, for blockchain agnostic systems and uh, it will lead uh, probably the new industry standards of the future so with that i'm saying goodbye thank you for joining this special session here thank you for the loyalty at lcx community and spread the world share uh, the news and invite your friends to lcx thanks for joining and have a good evening bye this is LCX Insights Live. For more insights, please visit lcx.com forward slash insights and follow us on Twitter at LCX. Onwards and upwards.